I'm Tim Tyler and this is a brief review of this book of The Origin of Cultures or Companion Book Summary for The Origin of Cultures Towards a Unified Theory of Human Evolution by John Lynn and I'll show you the back and read you the subtitle at the same time it says Understanding Cultural Evolution by Building Conscious Robots with Feelings and there's the book, it's not very thick and this book is actually a summary of this much larger book which I haven't read yet uh, this book has got a more comprehensive contents page, it's got diagrams, it's got a lot more content, and it's got a whole bunch of references and indexes at the back. Um, so, this book, however, is more expensive than this book. This is a summary to give you some de details about what the contents of the bigger book are. So, um, to start with, I'm going to read you a section from the fourth page. Uh, the introductory section of the book says because cultural information is conceived, processed and transmitted by the human mind to understand culture we must first understand how the human brain conceives and processes information this is a daunting task because up to this date we don't really understand how the human brain does this and it remains one of the biggest hurdles preventing proper analysis of human culture and then to explain why that's the case, the author, author writes, In the past, theorists have adopted the behaviourist approach of Skinner and Watson and treated the human brain as an irrelevant black box. According to this view, what goes on in the mind is ultimately inconsequential. What matters are the output manifest behaviours of such a black box and the conditioned stimulus response patterns that we can elicit from it. And then it says... Yet such a perspective runs grossly contrary to our introspective experiences. At every waking moment, each of us can experience a rich inner mental life, and we know intuitively that our inner thoughts, beliefs, and emotional biases often play a significant role in the decisions we make and the behaviours we exhibit. Any theory that denies the reality of such mental experiences or their significance simply is not plausible. So, and then the book is divided into two halves, or the big book is divided into two halves, and this one summarises the same chapters. Um, so the first half of the book is all about building conscious robots with feelings, which attempts to explain how the human mind works. And then the second part of the book is all about cultural evolution. And um, the section I just read was the author's justification for doing that split. Um, but I'm not convinced that you have to understand how the human mind works before you can say very much about cultural evolution. Most of the other cultural evolution theorists out there are content to adopt a behaviourist style perspective on the operation of the human mind and treat it as a black box and just study its inputs and outputs. Now that approach doesn't deny that there's interesting things going on inside the black box that we could conceivably explore, um, but it does mean that you can start on the project of understanding how human culture evolves without first of all embarking on the project of um, trying to figure out what's going on inside the black box. That is a hard problem and if we have to crack that problem first of all before we can say much about how culture evolves then um, we're not going to get anywhere studying how culture evolves for a considerable period of time because of the difficulty of that problem. So most other authors um, have I wouldn't say exactly adopted a behavioural approach, um, but they have treated the mind as something of a black box, build models of it to the extent that we can, but d don't think that you have to understand the entire workings of what's going on inside the mind before you can understand how culture evolves. There's an awful lot that you can um, infer about what's going on inside the mind from how the inputs and output changes. Um, and yeah, so, so basically um, when I read that I thought that the first part of the book was probably not going to be um, the main thing that I was interested in. I'm more interested in cultural evolution than I am in the details of how the mind works. Not that that's uh, not an interesting problem, it's just not the problem that I myself am particularly focused on. So um, that was my thinking about the rationale for um, trying to understand how the mind works in the first part of the book. And um, sure enough, I didn't find the first part of the book as interesting as I would have liked. I uh, was more inclined to skip on to the section of the book all about cultural evolution. So in this um, review of the book I'm going to adopt the same strategy and skip on to the second part of the book which is all about how culture evolves. Um, the author 
Well, in the larger book, um, the author has a section on memes and memetics, um, which is very brief, and it basically says that he doesn't approve of the memetics terminology um, because of partly because of the baggage associated with it, and partly because um, he doesn't think that um, memes are the thing that evolves, and he proposes using the term concept to describe what evolves. Um, concept is an ordinary English word with some baggage of its own. Um, on the other hand, it doesn't just describe culturally transmitted information, it refers to a whole range of other things that go on inside minds. And looking at everything that you learn, rather than everything that you learn socially, is an interesting and useful approach to understanding how culture evolves. Um, if you just focus on the cultural information itself, then what happens is, is that you tend to lose focus on the other things that social learn, socially learned information evolves with inside minds. So there's a big evolutionary process going on inside the mind that doesn't just include memes and socially transmitted information, it includes a whole bunch of other things that are acquired by individual learning. And if you focus exclusively on memes or information that's socially transmitted, then um, you tend to lose the emphasis on the individual learning aspect of the evolution of the contents of the mind and it's probably better to adopt a more unified perspective and that's kind of what the author does. They um, consider the evolution of um, concepts rather than the evolution of memes um, because in order to understand the evolution of memes properly you have to um, consider other learned information and the author has a amazingly broad definition of what a concept is. He just describes it as practically any information in the brain that's um, perceived and processed by the mind, um, which seems to drag in practically everything. <laughs> um, so I think there's some benefit to considering the mind to implement a virtual world and consider evolution of things within that virtual world and not the whole workings of the brain otherwise you get down to um, copying within neurons and between synapses and you, you get a, um, a very general theory but also one that's not specific to ideas and the things that humans are more focused on so I'm not quite sure about that definition of um, the units that evolve inside the mind. So, um, there's a whole bunch more I can say about this book. Um, it has an uh, author who's interested in machine intelligence, which quite appeals to me because that's another one of my own interests. Uh, the author has a very um, unusual style to my way of thinking, so um, he seems pretty keen on using intuition and deep understanding of systems and not all that keen on analysing um, the existing scientific literature on the topic and um, I thought there was a way too much um, intuition being used um, and intuition's good in some respects sometimes you can get a good understanding of systems using um, intuition um, but there's um, virtues to sticking to the scientific literature and studying what other people have done and the um, author just uses their own insight into the, um, the systems that he's considering um, to a huge amount, um, you know, to a vast extent, I felt. And so we, by the end of the book, you get a very clear idea about what he thinks, but um, he doesn't um, reference enough of what other people think for my taste at all. It's a kind of an individual effort, um, and that's interesting and um, unusual, but um, yeah, you want to kind of hear how his views fit in with other people more than he does. He doesn't completely um, ignore what other people have thought, but there's not as much of that in the book as I would like, and it does give the book its own um, unique flavour, but um, I would have much rather seen a lot more referencing of other people's work and what other scientists think, basically. Uh, so, um, I could say a lot more, um, but I'm going to call that day now. So, um, oh, I suppose one other thing I should mention is is that um, yeah, John sent me his book basically for review. Um, so, thanks for that, John. Um, I hope I've um, given some impressions to let other people um, know about it. Um, and I should add, um, the book, I checked the availability of the book, doesn't seem to be on Amazon. The big book, this one's on Amazon, um, but the smaller version, uh, I found it on Barnes & Noble. Um, it's not um, completely unavailable, but you may not have a terribly easy time getting hold of a copy of this if you want to do so. 
Um, so, interesting, unique perspective. Um, I can't think of another book that's like it, um, but um, I found um, some problems, and um, so that's that's my review. Um, enjoy.